Hi there everybody, welcome back to another Chem Complete lecture video and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at how to continue organizing raw statistical data in different types of charts and methods and more specifically we are going to take a look at how to create stem and leaf plots from raw data that we have collected. So that's all coming up on the channel right now. All right, so organizing raw data into stem and leaf plots. So a lot of students, by the time they get to an actual statistics course, have probably come across stem and leaf plots. It's pretty typical that it is taught in some sort of a middle school slash maybe the beginning of upper school uh, type of situation. So with stem and leaf plots, what we're going to do is we're going to break apart quantitative or number-based data. And when we do that, it's going to allow us to kind of take a visual inspection of how the data is going to be distributed, usually over units of 10. So um, depending on the range of the data and how wide the data set goes, you may get into the hundreds, which I'll mention here in a minute, or the thousands or whatever place it might be. And then the leaf portionality is typically going to be reserved for the ones unit. Now there could be variations on this where let's say that your data is really in the thousands and you want to simply make the stem uh, one through 9,000 and then everything else is going to fall into a unit other than that. So maybe it's like price of uh, used cars on a dealership lot that sold over a 30 day period or something like that. Okay, so know that there's variability here, but usually the smaller units are going to be considered the leaf and then the larger units from a uh, quantitative or numerical standpoint are going to be considered the stem. So when we start breaking this down, we're going to set up two columns, which you can see the example that I've got here. And the stem will typically be the tens units and above. So again, in example, it could be hundreds or thousands. And then the leaf is typically the ones unit. Again, variation may occur depending on the type of data set that you have. And so you will list, let's say that I have a bunch of 20s, you'll put a 2 for the stem, and then whatever the 1s unit is after that. And then 30s, I put a 3 for the stem, and then again, whatever the 1s units would be. So if it was 33, I'd have a 3 in the stem and a 3 in the leaf. If it was, let's say, 78, I would have a 7 in the stem and an 8 in the leaf. So it's very um, simplistic in terms of understanding how to do uh, but it is very useful because it can show a general distribution of what the data looks like. You can kind of look at it. It looks like it's turned on its side from a normal distribution. But you can see, does the data look like it's normally distributed? Does the data look like it has, uh, you know, it's, it's skewed to the left or skewed to the right in terms of numbers? Uh, it helps in terms of visualizing some of that. So we're going to take a look at two examples here. I'll help walk through the first one, and then I really want you guys to try the second one. Uh, before the walkthrough. So if you wanted from the explanation that I uh, just gave, if you want to make an attempt at this, feel free to pause it and make your own stem and leaf plot. But we're going to go ahead and attempt to create this here. Okay, so example one says create a stem and leaf plot for the number of cardiograms performed by a medical center over the course of 20 days. And you can see here's the data. We've got four rows, five columns, and that is the total uh, set as far as the numbers or the count for the cardiograms over the 20 days. So what I would do is I would simply go ahead and create a stem and leaf plot. I'm going to break it apart into the two columns and I'll say that this is going to be the stem and then the right hand portion will be the leaf just like we saw above. Now, starting here, we want to find what the lowest number set is. And if you take a look for a minute, you'll see that there was one day where they only performed two. So we technically will have a stem of zero because there are no tens units that are present there. And then the leaf will be two for that particular one. So before we proceed forward, let's just make sure that there's no other examples here. And it doesn't look like there are. So then the next question is, do we have any with a ones unit? So basically anything that would be 10 through uh, 19. And we do have a few of them here. We've got a 13 right here. And continuing to look, we've got a 14 right after that. 
And then from the rest of the data set, there is nothing else that looks like that. So we've got a 13 and a 14. We'll go ahead and mark those two off. And so I've got a three and a four. And then for the 20s, if we take a look here really quick, we've got a 25. We've got a 20. We've got a 23. And then it doesn't look like there's any other 20s from there. So it would be 20, 23, and then 25. So 20 would be a 0, and then 3, and then 5. And we can mark those off. Okay, 30. There's definitely quite a number of 30s up there just by glancing at it. So let's go ahead and take a look through. We've got a 31. We have a 32. We've got a 33, a 32, a 32, a 36, another 32. That's a lot of 32s, so 32 would most likely be the mode for this set, the number that repeats most often. And so it looks like we're good here. So there was a 31, so we'll do 31. The 32, there's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. So we need to put a 2, 2, two and two and yes it does seem redundant but you're repeating it because again you want to visualize the data or the counts we do have a 33 and we have a 36 okay so definitely a large count there that accounts for quite a number of the days where these cardiograms were taken uh, then moving on to four so do we have any in the 40s yes we do we've got a 43 we've got a 44 we've got a 45 and we've got another 44 down here so it would be three four, four, and five. So go ahead and put that in three, four, four, and five. And then we have some fifties and it looks like after the fifties, that would be it. The rest of these are fifties. So we have a 57, a 51, and a 52. So let's go ahead and finish this off with a five. And then we would have a one, a two, and a seven. So when I talk about visualizing it, if you come through and you look, you can kind of see the way that this data is distributed and it's distributed in such a manner that it looks fairly normal in its distribution so again if i were to kind of convert this over and look at this it almost looks like a bell curve or a gaussian curve right with this peak here being the values that are in the 30s right uh, i put three there because i was just looking at the stem but the values that are in the 30s are most likely going to center around there 32 being the prime example uh, of the most common or the mode that we see there, right? That many 32s should bring the average or center it pretty close to that value, probably not exactly. All right, so let's take a look at example two. And again, this one, I'd rather you pause the lecture, attempt it yourself, and then we'll go through it together. So example two says, the number of visitors to the historic museum for 25 randomly selected hours is shown. Construct a stem and leaf plot for the data. So here are the hours. I'll make sure that I leave that on screen there for when you get ready to pause it. Give it a shot and then come back and see how your stem and leaf plot holds up. All right, so hopefully everybody had a chance to try that. We will go ahead and create the stem and leaf plot. I'm not going to walk through it quite as slow as I did last time, so I'm not going to be circling and going through them, but you can certainly do that for yourself as you go through. So the stem will be over on the left here, and then the leaf portionality will be over on the right. There are quite a large range of numbers here, so I'm going to make sure I extend this downwards to capture all of it, because I'm going to have to go through 1 through 9 on my stem, because if I go back up here, you can see there's numbers as low as something like 15, and then there is a day where we had over 90. It was this one right here. We had a total of 98. So using that data set, what you would get is for stem 1, because there were never less than 10 visitors to the historic museum, we had a 5 and a 9. For two, for the 20s, we had 26 and we had 28. For three, which is the largest count here, the 30s seem to be the largest count, three would be, there was an example where there was 31, 5, 8, 8, and 9. For 40, we had an example with 41, 47, and 48. For 50, we had three of them. There was a 53, a 53, and a 54. 
For the 60s, we also had a fairly large count compared to the others. There was a day where there were 62 in that hour, 63, 67, and 68. Then for the 70s, we had 76 and 79. For the 80s, you should have had 86, 88, and 89. And then finally, for the 9 we discussed a moment ago, you would just have the 98. So that should be the stem and leaf plot. Again, you can see we could make an argument that there's somewhat of a normal distribution, but it really kind of comes up, takes a dip, and then almost comes up again. I don't know that I would quite call that uh, like a bimodal where you have two of them, although it's a little more representative of that. This is kind of just you've got a distribution that's sort of all over the place here, okay, which can certainly happen. Not everything is going to be a normal distribution. Uh, it could just be that there was a random allotment of visitors. It depends on what particular hour, what day, things like that. That would be something that we would be more interested in knowing about the data. What hours were they taken out? Were they always consistent? You know, is it during work hours? Are they on weekends, etc.? Right? That's all valuable data to know. So anyway, that is how to create stem and leaf plots. I hope everybody found this useful in our continuation of the statistics lecture series. Uh, just as a quick shout out, if you go to chemcomplete.com, if you're in any type of STEM class, we have a lot of chemistry material over there. Uh, we also have some things regarding lab reports and how to organize data in lab reports. So I will have some statistics related materials that release on that website very soon. Uh, that you can go over. There will be free resources as well as there are very affordable paid for resources, you know, five, 10, 15 bucks for a guide that will take you and walk you through multiple examples of a more difficult concept. So other than that, liking the video will always help the channel and promote us in the algorithm. And I appreciate you guys learning with me. If you subscribe, you'll stay up to date. Leave a comment. If you have any questions, I'll get back to you and I will see everybody for the next lecture. Take care.